Niche research is incredibly important. In this video, we're gonna get going with the basics of niche research, what it means and how we do it. So you can think of niche research as this. If you don't do it, you're basically throwing crap at a wall and seeing what sticks. Niche research, what it allows you to do is find out before you create all the books, what is more likely to stick to that wall, what books are more likely to sell. So instead of having to create 100 books and maybe one or two of them sell, if you do niche research correctly, you might create 20 books and maybe 10 to 15 of them sell. So it basically increases the probability of your books performing well. And seeing as creating a book takes time, it takes money, it takes effort. And then also with Amazon KDP, I recommend launching your book effectively, you know, using Amazon ads. The amount of money it costs to launch a book as well as make the book can add up. So that's why niche research is incredibly important. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the principles of niche research and what that looks like. So these are the three things that we need to look at to identify our niche. So the first thing we need to identify is the type of book that we're making. A lot of that will come down to the tools you have and the skills you have available to you, or you know the ability to hire someone else to create that book for you. But generally, most of us, we have kind of areas of expertise that allow us to create certain books to a high quality. And so if you can identify the type of book beforehand, this will allow you to hone in on certain areas on Amazon KDP. The second part of niche research is identifying a passion point. I'll come on to this in a minute in more detail, but basically you wanna be creating content for people's passion points, something they're gonna enjoy, something they're gonna buy, something they're gonna gift. Passion points are incredibly important in marketing and it's the same on Amazon KDP. And then the third thing is identifying the correct target audience for your book. Now moving on to the types of book. So there are three levels of books that you can create on Amazon. You have your low content books, your medium content books, and your high content books. So your low content books are basically things that don't have anything inside, or they have minimal amount of content inside that people are supposed to fill in for themselves. So things like lined journals, notebooks, etc. So these ones are very, very easy to make, which is why I have labeled it as green, but they're also likely to have the highest amount of competition due to a very low barrier of entry. Medium content books is where I spend most of my time. These types of books tend to be things that, you know, have enough content inside but still require the consumer to fill in parts of it. Things like puzzle books, coloring books, etc. So you have to create the content that goes in there, but you're not writing a full book, for example, and creating all of its contents. And that leads us on to high content, which are things like fiction and non-fiction, you know, full length novels, or books that contain all of the information, things like recipe books, for example. So on this channel, and for me personally, I focus mostly on medium content books. I do try out a few low content books when I find an interesting area, and I have written high content books before as well. However, high content books tend to take a lot of time to make, and the results can be hit and miss. So for most people, you don't really wanna be spending months or even years creating high content books if you're not sure if they're gonna sell. And that's why medium content books are kind of the sweet spot for Amazon KDP. Now actually looking at the types of books, you've got things like coloring books, joke books. And I know that some of you want to see the types of books that I've created. Here's one of my dinosaur joke books that I created last year. Then you've got things like puzzle books like crossword or word search books or you can dive down into journals and gratitude journals and all those types of different areas within those. So once you've identified the types of books that you're looking to create, we come on to the passion point. And the key reason for this is like, once we try and identify what people are interested in, we can find out what they're actually searching out and what they're likely to buy. This could be things like activities and sports, hobbies, so things like gardening, stamp collecting, etc or just general things that they love. Like there's a lot of people out there, for example, who love their French Bulldogs, or there's a lot of people out there who love their local sports team. So it's trying to identify different areas within those passion points. And then the next important thing to come on to is your target audience. So who are you making this book for? A lot of the times that's sort of an age range, so whether it's for kids, for adults, for seniors, or even like specifically within that for age four to eight, for example. 
your sex, so is it for males, females, etc. Or other things like, is it for parents, dads, wives, trying to identify a certain area of people that your book is aimed for. So once you've had a think of like the type of books you want to create, your passion points that maybe you have a bit of experience in, or a list of passion points that you could look at creating a book in, you have a bit of an idea around the age range and who you're trying to target, what do we do next? Next, we need to find the niches with a high volume of searches, but ideally a low amount of competition. So the reason that we want to find that sweet point within this is we want to have a lot of people coming across your book, but then we want a low amount of competition so there's more chances of your book ranking for certain search terms within those niches. So for example, if we did a coloring book for adults, there's a lot of volume going to that search term, but there's also probably hundreds of thousands of books ranking for that search term. So it's gonna be impossible or almost impossible to rank on the first page and get people to see your book for that search term. However, if you created stress relief mandalas for seniors, there might be a better chance of ranking on that first page for that kind of more niche down search term. Now, how do we find those areas? That is the essential premise of niche research and this is why we do it finding that sweet spot which has a high amount of volume, but a relatively low amount of competition. You know, that's the gold mine that you can find on Amazon KDP, but it takes a lot of work. It also takes some trial and error, and there's multiple ways to go about it. However, there are two main ways to do niche research. One is using paid tools. One of the best tools out there is Helium 10. It can be a little bit pricey, but basically it saves you so much time and effort and in my opinion, even though no tool can guarantee you results, it's the closest thing out there. Out the second way, and I'll do a video on this shortly, is just searching around on Amazon. And so compared to the paid tools, this takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, but it doesn't cost you a cent. So basically the premise of searching around on Amazon is finding the types of book you want to create and then seeing what's out there, looking at the best seller rank, so the lower the best seller rank, the more it's selling, and then looking at the book titles and seeing what the kind of search terms might be for those books is just trial and error using the Amazon search bar. So once you've found your niche, that is not where it ends. Now it actually comes on to making your book. And this is where so many people go wrong. You know, if you've put in the time and the effort or even the money to identify those hot niches, then next comes an even more important part. And that is you want to create a book which is either better or different. Now I'm gonna go into an example on this in a minute just to show you what I kind of mean by this. But generally what you do not wanna be doing is finding a niche that looks interesting and then just copying what other people are doing. That is not how you succeed on Amazon KDP. And if you're one of those people who are creating books, pumping books out and seeing very minimal sales, this might be why. You need to put the time, put the effort, put the research in to try and create better content than what's already out there. This is one of the best sellers within adult coloring books, especially around calmness. And so this book is called 101 Calmness Coloring Book. So I have gone onto the product page, I've took an example of the coloring pages from their A plus content, I've took their description, and then what I did after that is I went through all of their reviews and picked out a couple of things where I thought, oh, that's interesting, and maybe I could improve on the product by doing this or that. So that's a great way. This is called product research. So we've done our niche research to find the types of books we want to create. And now this is going into product research to see how we can better or differentiate around what's already out there. So this book is 101 coloring pages. It's the standard large 8.5 by 11 inch format, 207 pages, which means they're single sided to help prevent bleed through framed illustrations which seem to work quite well, hours of art therapy and relaxation. So basically what this is, it's 101 colouring pages, single sided with frames. So looking through the reviews, there's some things you can't control, so it's print on demand by Amazon, so you can't really control the quality of the paper for example, but looking here, it says the art is pretty slapdash and a weird combination of super detail and super rushed. There's a lot of shading in the art, which I don't think works for coloring books, and the pictures themselves get pretty repetitive. 
So I also noticed the shading comment on a few other reviews as well. So if we come on to an example of how we could do things better or different, we can go into that here. So bettering this coloring book, it's 101 calmness. So you could just be cheeky and do 102 calmness. And if they're the same price, maybe someone will go for the higher amount of coloring pages. I still personally think that this cover's not absolutely incredible. It's done really well to sell this well. Um, it's utilizing the rule of thirds nicely, but I do think that this cover could be improved upon and that would help your book to stand out. And then as I kind of mentioned, the quality of coloring pages. Now that's more for the reviews and that's kind of a long-term growth of the book rather than selling straight away. But if you create a better product, there's every chance that you're gonna get more sales. So you could do things like less shading, less repetition, etc. And then to differentiate from this book, maybe there's an alternative niche to calmness or different words that you can sell it around, you know, mindfulness, for example. You could try a different target audience. So this one looks like it's probably very general or maybe it's more adult focused. So you could do one for teens, you could do one for kids, you could do one for seniors. And then you could also do a different type of book. So this 101 calmness coloring book, maybe you could do 102 puzzles for calmness. There's ways of differentiating and then there's ways of bettering what's out there as well. So to summarize this, there's basically three steps to creating books that sell on Amazon. The first things first, you need to identify the type of book that you want to create. That's because of the tools that are available to you and this is gonna help you to create the best book possible. Then next, you need to research what other people are doing. So that's what we just went into there with a quick example, but you wanna be looking at what's selling, what people are doing well, and then from that, you need to find where the opportunities are to create something different or better. So hopefully that presentation was useful and that kind of gives you the basis to why we do niche research and what types of things you need to look into when creating books. Now, when I first started on Amazon KDP, I was just creating whatever I wanted to create and then the majority of them weren't selling either because one, they weren't getting enough traffic, two, there was too much competition to those search terms, or three, I was just creating more of what's already out there and I wasn't differentiating or bettering my books from the competition. So when you're ready to make your next book, make sure you're going through this video, ticking off everything to make sure you've got the best chance of creating a product that will actually sell on Amazon KDP. Now, this one was the first video in the niche research series that I'm getting going here on YouTube. So if you're interested in this or other content like it, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for further content. Okay, thanks everyone for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.